Hello podcast legends, welcome back for another episode and this one's a cracker if you've ever dreamed of having a flatter tummy or better still, a six pack. I've hired a professional for this because I've never had one, Alex Crockford, good friend, really good friend in the industry, I've known him for many years, he is a fitness model here in the UK and now pretty much all over the world. He's done phenomenally well with his business, helping people, and he has, let's be honest, an incredible body, a pretty face, and everything I dream of. So I've brought him in to tell you the truth, because we know from being in this industry that a lot of rubbish, a lot of junk is thrown in your direction, false promises of six packs in six minutes, and all that stuff. Here today, Alex Crockford tells you the truth, how you can do it if you want to, some real tangible advice that you can take away today and improve what you're doing to get you better results. So I really do hope it helps. As always, comment wherever you're watching or listening to this. Let us know what you thought of it. Give us feedback and be sure to follow Alex for more content and obviously subscribe to this podcast if you can. I've just twigged in the background the sweets on the side. Clearly I've got some work to do, but I hope you can do better. (laughs) Enjoy. Alex, okay. yes, the six pack. Yeah, give me the truth, mate, because I've been searching for years. Yeah. How do we actually get a six pack? Not the Daily Mail headline version, five minute six pack. How do we actually do it, mate? <laughs> oh, you just some one day you just wake up and it's there. It's just luck. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course I'm joking. The six pack, the like, it is. It's hard to achieve, but also easy to achieve because. Like you say, you see it in the media, all these kind of five minute tips and get it in 30 days and stuff. And that may be motivating to see, but really in all honest truth, it is the same simple habits repeated continuously over again. And it's all the stuff that we're always talking about, the good nutrition, the good training and the right training, and um, all the lifestyle factors like the sleep and recovery and rest. But most importantly, all of those umbrellaed under the term of consistency. And when getting an actual six pack, it's about being lean enough to see it, but also you've got to find the right balance of actually eating enough and eating enough of the right food and enough protein to build lean muscle so the actual muscle tissue is there by doing resistance training, whether that's with weights or body weight, it doesn't matter, but some form of resistance training rather than run, 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 treadmill, treadmill, cross trainer, cardio, which is what a lot of people just tend to lean towards when they're on a weight loss journey or they want to transform their body. Would you say anyone, if they are consistent enough, could get a six pack if they, if they desired that? Yeah, I believe so. But in theory, we've all got abs there. I was gonna say, I was gonna point, I haven't got the anatomical man. Maybe I've no. up. They're there. They're like, there and everybody's got them. It's just, you know, like being I able said, to see them. being able to see them, exactly. You've given me hope. The flat tummy six pack <laughs> is achievable. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where are, and I'm trying to find an excuse for myself here, yeah. where are the biggest mistakes people like me are making yeah. when we're maybe, because I exercise well, yeah. but I don't have a six pack. Where mm. would you, you can pick on me because I'm sitting <laughs> here, where do most of us go wrong? What are we missing? If you are doing lots of training and really putting your body through stress, then you've got to have a higher amount of protein in order to actually build the muscle, but also enough calories as well. So I think one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people do is actually under eating. And when you're transforming your body or losing fat, it's so easy to just jump into that dieting mindset of restriction. And I've been there back in those early days of being a fitness model and um, attending castings and jobs. I went through this restriction binge routine where I was like overdoing cardio, under eating massively to try and get lean for a casting or a photo shoot. I would finish the casting or photo shoot, binge afterwards and lose like two or three weeks of progress in two days or something and then repeat that process. And it took a while to have the right mental attitude to get over that, to actually eat more, enjoy the process, get better results, finish a casting or a photo shoot and not need to binge because I'm enjoying what I'm doing day to day and then just carry on the process. So, yeah. 
like to give some context to someone who maybe doesn't know we, I've known yeah. you for years like we were at David Lloyd's together yeah you're in good shape you've obviously your shape's changed a lot over the years mm. isn't it yeah how, can you say how many years of training realistically if I was just a normal yeah. whatever normal is guy or girl and I said I want to be a fitness model it became my goal yeah could you give a figure can you give an estimate of how long it might take dedication wise commitment wise I think it really depends on where that person is. Like we're always talking about a three month transformation. That's a, maybe a lot of commitment can take a lot of change, but really to see like a fitness body shape then longer, six or nine months of maybe that kind of work. <laughs> is it good? Is it, yeah, well, should I just well, keep like, increasing? I, I asked the question because I know that you changed. Yeah. Nowadays, people are selling fitness plans that are short term. I do yeah. personally, because it gives mm. that initial kick for someone. Yeah but you have adapted yours to mm. become a 12 month process, haven't you? Yes, and exactly. And I find that interesting that you've done that yeah. well, not others have. Yeah, so exactly. Right. I, I saw the, the massive success and benefit of eight, 10 or 12 week programs, and it, it is, it really gets people in the zone, in the right mindset. Um, but sometimes when it ends, it, there is this drop of motivation, like following something and being a part of community is really motivating. And if that stops and ends, sometimes all the all the habits that you are building up kind of drop back off and you go back to your old self, which is why I created a second, third and fourth 12 week program to create this one year plan to really set in those habits for long term success. So it might not be a body transformation in one year, it might be the fact that you actually realize that this is my life and I enjoy health and fitness and exercising and eating well um, for the, the long term because that's where the real benefits and results come from. Got it. I need to sum up what you just told me. It can be done. It takes time. You've got to be consistent. You need some resistance training of some kind, whether that's body weight or in the gym doing weights, and you need to eat pretty well. If you can do that consistently, you could achieve anybody could achieve a body that they desire to have, whether it's six pack, flat tummy, whatever it is they're visualizing, can be done. Yeah. However, if I am, let's take a classic, a classic client who comes to us. Let me take Jemima. Ah, oh, Jemima. Love yeah. Jemima. <laughs> she, she's really nice, actually. I must say hello to her this week. 45 <laughs> years old. She comes to you and she says, look, I'm a little bit tubby, chubby. She's got the normal sort of body fat we have. Um, she's done some exercise, has tried all sorts of diets, Atkins, she's done it all, mate, yeah. with limited success. She says, Alex, I'm serious now, mate, I want to get this done, I want to be on the front cover of Women's Health. Yeah. Within 12 months, she says to you, Yeah. What do you, what's your advice to Jemima? What do you say? Where does she start? Well, if she, if she really does have that commitment of time of like really going for it. Oh, she's up for this. Yeah. <laughs> she's up for this. <laughs> well, in that case, um, I would first of all ask her what type of training she enjoys most because it's just going to make the process so much easier and she'll be more consistent with it. Where, like whether that is home training, gym training, like a community class, like hit workouts and stuff like that. And once I know what she really enjoys most, then I'd kind of base a, a program or my advice around that. But let's say I had full control, then I would say she gets in the gym for three or four times a week with a resistance weightlifting training program, full body or a different split routine across the body. And then alongside that four day uh, workout routine would be the daily 10 to 15,000 steps of being active and, and staying active, whether that's through cardio training or just moving and walking around. When it comes to nutrition, it's gonna play a humongous part because if you're gonna do all that, if she's doing all that resistance training and working, then like I said, she's got to get the protein up, but also enough calories and enough of the right good food. Lots of vegetables, lots of healthy, fresh, real food. Do you, do you actively encourage someone like Jemima to find accountability with something other than herself? Or yeah. are you an internal accountability promoter? <laughs> That's a phrase, isn't it? It is now. <laughs> you said it. Um, I, yeah. I would always push people towards some form of accountability and it can be anything. I, like social media is very powerful because you feel like you're documenting a journey to people whether you know them or you don't and you may find that that keeps you accountable because people might be waiting for you to update them on whatever you're doing but 
not everybody needs to post on social media. It might simply be a friend or a friend's group or you're talking to somebody. But I think what pe some people do, and, so and sometimes it is a mistake, is when people start their scary weight loss or fitness journey is when they have lack of self-belief and they kind of think they're going to fail, they end up being quiet and they end up not telling anyone because they know that, oh, if I, fa if I fail, nobody knew that I failed, so it doesn't matter. And that in itself can be a mistake compared to actually saying, you know what, everybody, this is what I'm doing, this is the journey that I'm on, and that accountability and support network has actually prevented them from failing and falling off. So yeah, accountability is huge one. from yeah. external. I definitely think that, and we've yeah. seen the growth of like having groups, slimming yeah. worlds, and the groups of these yeah, world have exactly. worked for that reason. We're now able to use mm. social media if you want, but you yeah. said it: tell your husband, your wife, or yeah. tell someone. So you've got that added on those days when you're struggling. Mm. There's yeah. that other other thing to think about, isn't yeah, there? Definitely. Kids are good as well. Yeah, Jamal's got three kids. <laughs> yeah, you tell them and they'll keep on your case, mate. Oh, they'll yeah, keep like, on your case. you're not supposed to be you, eating that. <laughs> you can't let them down. <laughs> you look a kid in the eye yeah. and tell him why you're eating that donut. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. Donuts. <laughs> oh, yeah, you eat donuts. Oh, I saw this. I don't know if this is an exclusive I'm giving right now. <sighs> this man eats Krispy Kreme donuts. I just love donuts. I just love them. It's really difficult for me. Like. A lot of people just see a good body and think, oh, they must just eat nothing. But we're all human, like everybody's human. Everybody has their weaknesses and what they enjoy most. And fair enough, I don't have a donut every day, but they, <laughs> but they are my weakness, yeah. And cookies That's as it. well, you know, I have a sweet tooth and I'd, a lot of people say, do you like to drink? But I'd prefer my calories, like if I'm gonna go for it, then I prefer eating. So Jemima's sorted yeah. to, Give me something tangible to give to Jemima and anyone else who's yeah. trying to get fit. And we, we've titled this about six packs, um, mainly so people look at it because we like the name six pack. <laughs> but really what I'm aiming this at is the people we deal with most days, which is just the people that want to get a bit better shape and feel yeah. better about their health. What are the top five things they need to nail to get yeah. to where they want to get to? Yeah, so... I think number one is actually following a plan, like having a routine and knowing what you're doing because in this day and age there is so much to do to achieve what you want and if with social media and the internet there is, there is this, that and the other and then you're just like spraying your energy and attention in so many different directions and you're like, what shall I do? Like everybody's saying something different. So the thing that's gonna work is the thing that you do consistently. So whatever plan that is or whatever, personal trainer you're with or whatever group you're joining is just stick with that do it right and see if it works and see if you're enjoying it number two is is having that community if you can build the community around that plan whether it's a virtual one or a physical one or just um, just a few people or a thousand people the community is powerful and then number three is the accountability like we said having the accountability don't be afraid to share your journey document it whether it's to, again, a couple of people or lots of people, social media, your family or friends. Number four is your nutrition. Nutrition only will work if you enjoy it. Don't be restrictive. Enjoy eating healthy, good food and sticking to those habits day by day because if you enjoy it, then you're going to stick to it long term and get the results you're looking for. Number five is the stress and recovery. If you're, if you're in a constant, constant high level of stress, then nothing's gonna happen. Stop looking at your phone and scrolling on Instagram at 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock. Put it away at like a good hour before you sleep. Uh, maybe that's, you know, just relaxing with the husband or partner or, or reading a book or having a bath because that lowering the heart rate and, your, and your, your body down to a relaxed state before sleeping is gonna make the sleeping process a lot more valuable to your body and then you're gonna feel better tomorrow ready to hit the gym again. Love that, mate. If there's more sleep, more results, I'm winning. But it's, no, yeah. it's so true. And if anyone, you go back through, I'm trying to really pick out the research on that because it is yeah. massive. And in January, this is going to be so, mm -hmm. so important. The mistakes we see time and time again is we're keen, we're ready, we're out of blocks, we're giving it large in the yeah. gym, we're giving it everything we want, and then yeah. we hit that wall inevitably. Yeah, it does. If you can be composed enough yeah. to understand the research around stress and how it does make us fatter, essentially, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And make that a priority as much as your food and your exercise. You didn't even mention yeah. exercise in that top no. five. That's yeah. interesting from my yeah. perspective, yeah. talking to you. <laughs> Have a look into stress, yeah. hormonal responses to everything we do, and you'll be surprised 
how much better your results will be, right? Yeah. Go on holiday like Alex does regularly. <laughs> Great for stress. Absolutely. <laughs> Increase that vitamin D, good sunlight on the skin. And, you know, it's great for you. Well, thanks, Al. I think that's uh, wrapped up what I wanted to answer. Great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure to see you, mate, after all these years. Yeah. Keep going. I'll put an ending on this properly. But thanks for watching, <laughs> whoever's there. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> I need to top my water up now. I can, I can fill you up there. <laughs> Cheers, mate. You've been listening to the Fit With Frank podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button right now so you can be first to be notified of new episodes released every week where Frank Dives Deep chats with some of the finest guests across the health and fitness industry alongside inspiring stories from people just like you so we can inspire and hopefully empower you to lead a happier, healthier lifestyle. Have fun.